David Volber. Vaat, tutustaks teda paari sõnaga Eesti keeles. Tema on Amerikast pärit, San Francisco ülikoolist. Ühe väga huvitava labori juht, mille inglise keel nimetus on Democratize Computing Lab. Ja tema huvi seisteb eelkõige selles, et kuidas kuidas öelda, programmeerimist ühitada kõik võimalike tegevustega. On ta siis ja kunstiline tegevus, loomikuline mehed, naised, mis iganes. Nüüd ma usun, et kõikidest eelkäijatest, tänastest esinatest erinevus on selles, et ta mitte ainult ei õpeta, vaid ka loob tarkvara ja vähe sellest, loob ka selle tarkvara kasutamise juhendeid õpikuid. Did I say it correctly? I have no idea. I hope so. Was it nice? Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. I'm very happy to be here. My name is Dave Olber. Let's see. So I'm from University of San Francisco. In the background there is the Golden Gate Bridge. We have a very beautiful school. The most difficult thing we have to do is keep the students from out looking out at the view instead of listening to our teachers. Um, so we definitely try to do a lot of interactive work. Um, I'm, so um, I'm a computer science professor. I've also wrote a book on App Inventor. So I'm going to tell you about this language called App Inventor for developing mobile apps. Um, I've got a site that teachers use and um, it's kind of like a Khan Academy-like site where students can go there directly too. And has a whole bunch of people. Um, I took a sabbatical to MIT and kind of helped build this system. I was the first teacher to teach with this App Inventor language. I went to a summer workshop. The tool wasn't ready, and the creator is this guy named Hal Abelson, and it was at Google, right? So there's about 10 teachers, and there was bugs in the system and all this kind of stuff. And Hal Abelson's like, "Look, it's Google. You should trust us, right?" And I think I was the only one of those 10 people to trust him. And I said, okay, I'll teach it next fall. And that's, I'm kind of a yes guy, and that gets me in trouble a lot of times. But in this case, it was great. It's been my greatest teaching, teaching experience. Okay, so quick introduction. You thought you were coming to a talk, but you're actually going to get a quiz. You're going to get a demo. I hope it works, okay? And the demo is going to be of this raffle app. So I'm going to build a raffle app in front of your eyes, and then I'm going to raffle off these great prizes, these two books from this wonderful author, okay? Um, if you do win or if you don't win, I'm going to show you how you can go home tonight and build your first app, okay? So that's going to be your homework, all right? Um, I'm also going to tell you about teaching with App Inventor, both at my school and with, uh, like, kindergarten through 12th, 12th grade, and um, we'll talk about... Um, how you can do this, not just for computer science courses, but for history courses, for any course you could think of, add kind of programming as a creative medium, okay? Um, so quickly, App Inventor, it's a visual drag and drop language. And you can basically get started within minutes. Within five or 10 minutes, you can have built your first app, and it's incredible. So the, the idea is, it's almost like plugging together puzzle pieces. So you don't have to learn all these crazy codes that you have to memorize, and it gets, it's much more accessible. How many people have heard of Scratch, the language Scratch? Okay, App Inventor is kind of Scratch for, for mobile languages. Scratch, you can build kind of web presentation kind of things. App Inventor, you can build mobile apps, including using GPS and texting and all the kind of stuff that comes, comes with that. Um, so that's what App Inventor is. Um, it was developed first at Google in 2009, um, and Hal Abelson, the guy I mentioned, he was, the, he was on sabbatical for two years at Google from, from MIT, he's an MIT professor. And after he built it, Google ended up giving him three and a half million dollars to take it back to MIT and run it in MIT. Um, so now it's an open source project, project there. It was inspired by... I don't know if anybody, anybody remember the old logo system? It was one of the first systems for kids to kind of do drawing on a computer back in like the 70s, I think. Okay, so Hal actually was a, a big contributor to that. And then a guy named Mitch Resnick built Scratch. Mitch was Hal's graduate student. 
And Hal was a graduate student of a guy named Seymour Papert, who's, I don't know if you've heard of constructionist theory and, and all kinds of creative kind of learning theories. He's, he's that guy. All right, so here's your quiz. Even though I haven't taught you anything, I'm going to give you a quiz. All right, this is an app inventor app. All right, what I want you to do is talk with your neighbors and tell me what this app does. Okay, so take a couple minutes and think about this one. Okay, do I, have, do I have ideas? Who can tell me what this app does? It sends a message from your wife saying, get over quickly. <laughs> <laughs> sends a wife to your message. You could write that app with App Inventor. That doesn't quite do that. I have another hand over here. That you're absolutely correct. This is what this does. So this is a texting answering machine um, for, for your app. And, and just real quickly, the yellow box is what's called an event handler. So everything in App Inventor, you say, you, how do I respond to some event? So it might be someone clicking the button, what do you want to do? Or in this case, when a text comes in, or when a GPS comes, comes in, how do you respond to that? So it's all about event handling. The green and purple blocks inside actually do something. And the first three are doing that auto response. So a text comes in, it says, oh, tell me who, what the phone number was of that text, and I want to auto respond to it. Then the bottom block actually kind of speaks the text out loud, right? So the idea is you turn the app on, you set it next to you in the car, and you're going to, so it will keep you from trying to grab that phone and, and do your text. Right? Or maybe it'll make you grab your phone and look at your text. So maybe it does the opposite of what you want. Um, but kind of the key, you know, I show this to my students the first day of class. And it's not exactly something they could build that first day. It's almost maybe the third or fourth week they could build this. But they can see the usefulness of this app. Right? And that's typically not done in a computer science and coding course. And this app was actually created by this kid named Daniel Finnegan. He was a USF student. He was an English major. So I teach non-majors. I'm a computer science professor, but I teach humanities students, business students, design students, anything but the normal puzzle doer kind of computer scientists. Um, I guess I can say this since I'm in a different country, but Daniel was not like this A student, right? But he wrote this app, and, he, and it got picked up by Wired Magazine. They thought it was so incredible that kind of this English major who had never taken coding at all could, could do this. It's a pretty crazy idea. I mean, I get seniors in computer science and grad students who have never developed a software which is so useful, right? And yet this language allowed this kid to do it, you know, within, within one semester. Okay, uh, I'm just going to read this quote. It's from Clive Thompson from Wired Magazine. He said, software after all affects almost everything we do. Pick any major problem, global warming, healthcare, or in Finnegan's case, highway safety, and clever software is part of the solution. Yet only a tiny chunk of people ever consider learning to write code, which means we're not tapping the creativity of, of a big chunk of society. You know, so the idea is this kid saw a problem in the world, and he was able to come up with a digital solution, a software solution, that normally he wouldn't even consider because coding is such an esoteric thing. That's kind of, kind of the idea. 
Um, okay, so just a couple questions. So I give this example out, and then the first thing I do is, you know, what else could you do with a similar kind of blocks, right? So you could think of, you know, instead of this app sending the same response to everybody, you might send a different response to your, to your grandma, right, or your wife or your husband, okay? Um, you could also think of a kind of a vote by texting app. So I don't know if you guys know Dancing with the Stars or, you know, these TV shows where you can vote by text, all right? You can kind of build such an app pretty easily in App Inventor. And usually when I tell students, they're like, oh, wow, that's pretty cool, right? Very useful, useful thing. Okay, so I'm going to do a demo. I'm going to build this raffle app in front of you. And then what I want you, don't text me yet. But if you want to text me, you can text me. Now, I'm from the U.S., okay? So you may have texting charges. I don't know. Um, but if you text me, and then I'm going to call somebody in the audience. Well, I'm not going to do it. But the app is going to call somebody in the audience, and you'll win a, win a book. But one thing I want to do is show you App Inventor, so I'll show you this, this app. And I'll come back to this slide in a second. All right, so here's the App Inventor development environment. Sorry, it's not reading very well. Um, but basically, this is a user interface designer. So you can just drag how you want your user interface to look. Uh, my user interface for this app is going to be very simple. I'm going to have one button. I'm going to drag it out, and I'm going to make that button say, pick a winner. And that's all my UI. I could make it look a lot prettier, but I'm going to just keep it like that. I'm going to add two more components, okay? And the components are going to be, one's a social component, or two of them are. One's called texting, okay? Notice it's a non-visible component. That's what that word at the bottom says. And what that means is you're not going to see it in the user interface of the app, but it's some component that can do stuff, right? In fact, what this guy can do is he can respond to text or he can read text, okay? So it's a, a, a thing that can do something. And I'm gonna add one more component called a phone call component, okay? And that's who's gonna, that phone call component's gonna call somebody in the, in the audience. So this is kind of the design of my app. And then I click on blocks, and this is where I do the coding. And this is kind of the puzzle piece kind of stuff I was talking about. And the first thing I'm gonna do is create a variable, and it's gonna be my phone list. And the way I explain this to my students is this is like the hidden memory of an app, right? So you're not going to be able to see this either. So if you do text me when we run this, don't worry. Your text won't show up on my screen, all right? Um, but this phone list is going to be an empty list to start, okay? And now I'm going to code the interactive behavior, all right? So one behavior I need is I need to respond to the texting.message received. So I don't know if you can see that. It says, when texting.message received, what do you want to happen? Okay, well, what do I want to happen in this case? When your texts come in, I want to add your phone number to this list I'm memorizing. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to this list drawer. Add items to list is what this block says. The list I care about is the phone list. And the item... The thing I want to put in my list is this thing called number. So that's the number of the person that texted me. Okay, so I'm going to stick that in there. All right, so when texts come in, I'm going to add them to my list. So I'm halfway there. Okay, the next thing is when the person clicks the button, so when button.click is my other event, I'm going to call somebody. All right, so let's see. I definitely want to do a phone call, make phone call. Okay, that says phone call dot make phone call. But I also need to set the phone number that I want to call. Okay, and I want to actually call some number in this list that I built when everybody texted me. All right, so I'm going to go to lists, and there's this thing called pick random item in a list. And I'm going to grab my phone list. Right, so that's my whole app. Two events, right? One event, a text comes in, I add it to this list I'm memorizing. Second event is I touch the button and I call somebody. Okay, so I'm going to get my phone ready here. 
As you're building this, you can kind of see things on your, on your phone. So I've now got the raffle app running. So this is the only class in our whole university where the teacher tells the students to turn their cell phones on, right? So if you can, if you're gonna, if you're gonna do the raffle, turn your sound on so we can hear the phone ring. It makes, it, makes for a better demo, okay? And let me bring up the uh, presentation. Okay, so here's my phone number. If you wanna join the raffle, please text my number. It doesn't matter, oh, sorry. When you text me, we're gonna do a little research here. If you've ever heard of App, if you've never heard of App Inventor, just text the number zero. If you've heard of it a little bit, text one. If you use App Inventor and you're an expert, text five and everything in between. Okay, but to join the raffle, please text this phone number. Text it something, it doesn't really matter but text the phone number and then you'll join the raffle. Okay, I'm starting to get some text coming in. I've only tried this with about 30 or 40 people, so we'll see what happens. So as this is coming through, I want you to think about this. Most coding classes, the first software you build is like a bank account program for like finding out the interest on your principal, right? This app is a lot more fun and a lot more inviting for young people to, to start out in their coding experience. Okay, listen, no cheating, only text once. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm going to pick a winner here. You need more time? Everybody okay? Okay, turn your ringers on. Here, here comes the, the big win. All right, so I, you can't see this, but on my phone is what I just built. It's got the one button called pick a winner. And I'm going to press that button now. I'm calling somebody with a 372. Is that from Estonia? Good. Anybody get the call? Must be present to win. Is there people on the internet watching this? All right, that person lost. We'll try again. I'm gonna pick another winner. It's a 4-4. What country is that? Is that you? Seven eight two four nine nine. I swear this was not fixed up. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, I'll do one more. I still get, uh, people are still texting. I'm going to pick one more winner. Now another 372. 520-0047. All right, first row, you did good. <laughs> that actually makes my job much easier. Here's your, here's your prize. Thank you. I don't know if it's like proximity gives you a better chance to win. I don't know. I, I didn't build that into, into the app. Oops. All right, so that's kind of my first day demo, get the students interested. Oh, wow, I could build something like that. That's really cool. And indeed, they could build that within like the second or third week of, of class. Um, there's a tutorial if you want to learn how to build this. And this whole slide is available online. And I'll, sh I'll show this again later if you want to get to the, to the slides. Okay, so you can build all kinds of stuff with the App Inventor. Of course, you can build games, like we build Pong, and we build shooting games. The kids can build all kinds of games like that. Uh, you can build quizzes and study guides quite quickly, quite easily. Um, you can do GPS stuff. So students love to build things like find the closest bar, right? That's at the university level, or find the closest hospitals. 
Um, you can also do like breadcrumb apps where you kind of record where you've been, that kind of stuff. Um, but the key is kind of real world apps, right? Instead of building some kind of software samples that nobody cares about, you're thinking about real problems, even if they're just personal problems, right? Something for your friends might use or something you might use to study. You're not trying to build software for 10 million people, but you're trying to tinker with your phone and kind of take control of it and build your own software. That's the, that's the idea. Uh, just a few other kind of real world things that kids did. So one kid for our CS night, and it's really strange. At our CS night, I have these non-majors who take this one course in computing. They present along with the seniors and master's students because they can build these cool apps, right? And I'll have alums come up to me and say, yeah, you know, can I hire that person? They're great. And I'll go, no, they only took one CS class, right? It's pretty crazy. Um, but anyway, one student wrote an app where people walked around and whatever poster or whatever project they like, they voted by text, kind of like we did just now. Another kid, his dad was studying for the U.S. citizenship exam. He took the bus every day, so he built a study guide for him to study. So, you know, kind of making use of the idea that we can build software this, for this mobile device, and in this case, he helped his, helped his dad. Somebody built an American Sign Language, so it, you could basically type in a word, and it would show you an animation of the sign language for, for that word. Um, and this kid from India, he built uh, this app to, so when, when, when a youngster went on a bus, they could start, they could, basically their parent would find out they got on the bus, and they could find out where that bus was all the way until they got home. So kind of a, a tracking of a child app. And in fact, that, that kid, his name is Arjun, he was 11 years old when he wrote, wrote that app. He kind of blew India away, okay? But that's kind of the power of, of App Inventor. Okay, so just really, you know, compared to other coding languages, Python and Java are maybe the most popular traditional languages where you type in codes, okay? Very difficult to learn. I get a bunch of smart students that come to USF, even math students, but all kinds of students, and if they take a Python or Java class to start, many of them just run out the door as fast as they can. Okay, the problem is you have to remember the codes, and then the computer barks these mean things to you like, oh, there's some weird error on line 72, and you can't even tell what the error is. How many people have taken such a coding course? Okay, yeah, that's the normal intro class. It's not because it's bad teacher or whatever, it's just those textual coding languages are real difficult for beginners to, to learn. Okay, so that's kind of the Python Java. Um, Scratch is a language which is great. Um, it's basically for web stuff, so it doesn't have all the cool mobile phone kind of stuff, right? But it's about the same difficulty, maybe slightly simpler. Some people will teach a little Scratch and then move to App Inventor. Some people will start with App Inventor and just start teaching it right away. Essentially, it's the same kind of block-based block -based stuff. Some high school kids and middle school kids, they'll look at Scratch and they'll be like, oh, that's for kids or something. I don't, I don't think that's true, but App Inventor is definitely a more kind of adult kind of thing, or at least the kids think it's a more adult thing to, to do. Um, and it's much more powerful. You can do just about anything. Um, how many people know about like the Hour of Code program? Okay, code.org is kind of behind that. And they've got these great tools where you can immediately kind of program these mazes. Like they have uh, the Angry Birds game and you can program the birds. To, it's a really nice setup. And they've got like millions of kids and others to do their first coding experience. Okay, and I kind of call that like maze programming. It's wonderful, it's a great way to start. And then, what do you do, okay? And what those tools don't do is they don't let you create anything, right? They don't get you to where, oh, I've got this real world project where I need to use coding to solve it, okay? So I think it's a great starter, and then the next thing to move on is to, to something creative. And that's kind of what App Inventor gives you. So my goal with, with teaching at USF is I want coding as a creative, real-world problem-solving activity. So in my class, they do learn to code, but it's like one-tenth or one-fifth of what they learn. 
They're really trying to find real problems and solve them, and part of that solution is, is software. And I think that's the way we need to, to think about it. Um, we're trying to broaden and diversify participation. I'll talk a little bit more, more about that in a second. Um, we're really not trying to train software engineers. We do. About 25 or 30% of my class will move on and take the next coding course in, in computer science. And a lot of them are seniors, so they can't, but some of them do, and we've had a number that have become majors, um, including a bunch of, of women. Um, really, we're trying to teach what's called computational thinking, so problem solving, right? You know, coding is a great way to learn problem solving, and that's kind of what we're, we're trying to teach. Um, I also think a lot of jobs, there's a little bit of programming as part of it. So there's a lot of jobs where you're not called a software engineer, but you're engineering software, okay? How many people have a job like that? Maybe there's not that many of them. <laughs> Zero people raise their hands. But a lot of people will have to learn some HTML or a little coding as they kind of move along. And they say, one report had it, in 2020, 21% of all jobs will have some coding. Okay, is that true? I don't know, but that's something to think about, right? Um, the other thing is, we want to teach people to communicate with coders, okay? As the world is becoming digitized, a lot of disciplines, a lot of jobs, there's some coders, and there's these other people, and they can't talk to each other at all, right? Even taking one coding course can just open up all this terminology, all these concepts, where all of a sudden, you can communicate, and you can be part of some some solution where software is a part of it. Okay, so it's very important as we, as we move, move along. Oh, oh, yeah, so back to the participation. This is, this is for schools in the U.S. and the computer science departments, and you can see the percentages. They're, they're terrible, right? And they've been talking about these problems for years, um, especially with women. I think it's 30% now. I think that's even high. They've been talking about it for years, and there's, you know, nothing, nothing has worked, nothing's helped. And I think one thing that a language like App Inventor and languages where you can do stuff and, and get success and do real stuff early on, I think that can really broaden the kinds of people that come to the field, okay? CS is great for puzzle doers who are maybe kind of inward focused, and they don't care what kind of puzzles they're building, right? But right now, CS education is really bad for drawing in more people who are like big picture thinkers and, and want to think about the whole, the whole problem. And that's the kind of people we're, we're trying to reach. Okay, so just a couple examples from my, my class. The, the top left is four women. They took my class one semester, and they got so kind of pumped up about it, they went the next semester and volunteered to teach at this program for middle school girls which just kind of blew me away, right, that they would be that excited about it. But that's the kind of uh, reaction we get. Kayla is a student who came, took my course. She's now a CS major, a senior, just about, just about to graduate, okay? Um, down below, it's, sorry, you can't see the picture very good. It's two students at our CS night who are from my 107, from my, from my course, right? It's just pretty unusual that you got all these groups of people in the, in the same place. Okay, so the way I teach is with uh, portfolio-based learning. So on my class website, I show every student's picture, even the first day. When you click on the picture, you get to their portfolio. So you know, a lot of people use this kind of thing for an art class, right? But we do this for this app class. And when they click on the picture, you get to the student's portfolio, and then on the right here, you can see She's got a bunch of pictures of all her apps, and then they've got QR codes on that page. So if someone scans the QR code, they can install the app of that person. App Inventor runs for Android, and the reason it runs for Android is because Android's completely open. Like with iOS and Apple, you can't put an app on the web and have some, somebody install it. But with Android, you can. So when the students create stuff, they're not just submitting homework, they're submitting something to the whole world, and that just changes completely kind of how much effort and, and the work they put into 
to building these projects. The motivation level goes, goes out the roof. Um, just a few examples of App Inventor. One is in Edinburgh, the Royal Society, they now teach App Inventor in all their schools. Um, here in Estonia, is anybody familiar with the, I don't know how to say this, but the, the group from Estonia? Okay, good. I'd love to talk to all of you. Um, I know App Inventor's used uh, some, some in that. And then I'm going to tell you about a group from Boston, and I'll show you a quick movie about this group from, from Boston. Um, okay, so this is the Massachusetts Teacher of the Year. These are ninth graders, okay? And the reason I want to show you this film mainly is when you teach this language, as soon as you get these codes, kids building stuff, the excitement on their faces is, is just amazing. And it you know, really kind of makes you want to continue teaching. So let's take a look at this film. Oh, whoops. Um, for the sound? Sorry. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Uh, still not. Probably intriguing. Computer science is water because it's like a never-ending well of technology and excitement. Possibility because you can really do anything with it and it can go in any direction. I think it's our future. Okay, good morning class. We are working on a new app today called Photo Booth. And what I'd like you to do while I'm speaking is please log in. So one of you please start App Inventor right now. And we're working on the user interface. My name is Kelly Powers. I've been teaching computer science for 14 years. I've been at the AMSA Charter School for four years. All of our kids uh, take computer science starting in grade six all the way through grade 11, and they're required to take it. It's not an option. Uh, here we go. Yeah. You can see and you can feel like the excitement of these kids actually creating. Is it inside the, yeah, it's inside the horizontal arrangement. Oh, today we made an app. It's called Photo Booth, but I don't think the name does it justice because you can like take different components. You can take a hat and put it on your head, or you could give yourself like long hair. It's really important to learn when you're young because it's like learning a language, and it's harder to learn a language once you get older. It's really cool to learn how to build apps since I use them so much because I can learn the process in making it. Our image sprite, no, sprite is really big, and on this one it's like small. So how do you want the sizing to be? The sizing should be, I've used most of them. I haven't used that sombrero, but I've used most of them and they've been fine. They've been fine in terms of heights. So you can play around with your liking. Oh, okay. Um, but the default size is... It doesn't feel like a classroom to me. Okay. It doesn't feel like a class. It just feels like, like something I'm passionate about, something I'm doing for 45 minutes every day. I always ask them to explain to me what you're trying to do. And they find out the solution on their own just by speaking it. Yeah, but there's a specific spot on the canvas. Talk to me about that. It's going... Oh, it's the image sprite. Yes. There you go. So you set the image sprite to, to the list speaker element. Yes. Oh my gosh. You know this. You just have to talk it out. You it's got it. One, Josh. There you go. So I got an image sprite. And those are three things that I always want to work on with all kids. Creativity, problem solving, and building their thinking skills. Every student, no matter what they do in their future, will need to have some foundational skills, understanding how to build technology, not just how to use it. It's critical at this point to look at computer science as a discipline, just as you would English, math, history. There are a lot of kids who graduated from college over the last two years without jobs, and there's a lot of jobs that are going unfilled, so there's a problem here. It's the technical jobs, the highly skilled technical jobs that aren't getting filled. Even if I don't go directly into computer science, it's helpful to know about computers because we use them every day. When I tell them, you just made this, you just made a smartphone app, how many of your friends can do that? Ah, you're right, you know? Um, they start to realize, wow, I, I am pretty talented, and they are. Um, you kind of, one reason I want to show that is 
like in my class, our classes are an hour, 45 minutes. And I have to basically kick my students out at the end. I think when students are building things, they get very excited and they want to stay there. So if you, if you want a classroom that's like student-driven learning, a tool like App Inventor is, is great for that. And it's not just the coding, right? You also have to go find the media for your app. You have to figure out what your app is. There's all kinds of stuff around it, but it's just a wonderful, wonderful experience. And, and I think that's what Kelly's uh, movie shows. So Technovation is a program in the U.S. for, and now it's worldwide, but for high school and middle school girls, girls only, okay? What they do is they do business plans. So the students work in groups, and they come up with some idea for an app, okay, or to solve some problem with a, some bit of a software solution, and they build the whole business plan, including a prototype with App Inventor. So App Inventor is like part of the work they do. At the end of the year, they give a pitch to some CEO types, okay, and then the winners go on to regionals, and then there's a, like a world pitch night at the end. And, you know, it's an incredible event, but it kind of shows, you know, how software can be part of some, some problem solving. It's pretty neat. Um, one team built this uh, nutrition app, and these are just four young girls from, from their team. These are all 15-year-old um, 15 15-year-old girls. They're pretty, pretty excited about it. Um, in East Palo Alto, some girls built an app where they um, basically tra track graffiti, right? So they built this app where you could go around and say, oh, man, there's some graffiti on this wall. Take a picture of it. The GPS would mark the location, and then they would be able to schedule events where people would come and try to clean it up, right? So kind of real-world, community-based solutions. Um, okay, so at the high school level in the U.S., traditionally, there's very few courses. Maybe 10% of high schools in the U.S. teach any coding. They might have something called computer science, but it'll be more like applications, like spreadsheets and that kind of stuff, but not creative kind of, kind of coding. Pretty far behind even most, most countries. Um, they do have a course in Java that nobody takes and nobody teaches. They can't find teachers to do it because it's too hard to teach. Now, with App Inventor and Scratch, like the women I showed you from USF, they took one semester in a course, and then they were able to go, go teach that. So these languages are much more accessible, and you can make it, make it happen. Um, there's also something called computer science principles. And this is like computational thinking. It's basically... Uh, computer science for schools that is not based on these hardcore languages that nobody can learn. It's going to come on board in 2016. They've done pilots, and it's going to dramatically increase what happens. So if you're thinking about any kind of uh, curriculum ideas for how to get high school computing going, this computer science principles initiative is a, a, a great one. And there's something called mobilecsp.org, which I'm involved with, is the kind of App Inventor mobile way to do that course. Okay, so some, some resources. If you want to build an app, you can go to MIT App Inventor, okay? I have the book that I showed you already. AppInventor.org is my teaching site. And in fact, there's a whole course online. I'll just show you real quick a little bit about that course. Okay, so it's basically got a number of modules um, one is introduction, one is about animation and games, all right? So when you go there, there's a bunch of lessons, and a bunch of them are video lessons. So for instance, if you want to build a paint pot app where you can kind of draw stuff on the screen, you can come here, watch the video, and kind of follow, up, follow along and, and, and build the app. So anyway, it's a, it's, this is both for students to go directly to, and we get a bunch of those, but also teachers. If you want to put in a module in your course, or teach a whole course, you can come to appinventor.org and, and try to uh, make use of those materials. Okay, here's just the teacher map. So these are teachers from all over the world who have signed up at appinventor.org who teach App Inventor, okay? And you can kind of check these out uh, at that link. And if you want to find out, say, middle school teachers or high school teachers, you can go and check out the work the work they do. Oops. Okay, so coming attractions. For you folks that are used to Scratch, 
One of the great things about it is Scratch has this gallery where you can post your apps and everybody can share and collaborate. We are now, at USF, we're adding that to App Inventor, and probably within the next two weeks, App Inventor will have this gallery where you can, you can share apps. So that's, that's coming. Um, also, a lot of people are interested in, once you learn this visual language, does it help you to do kind of professional level languages, okay? So one thing we're doing is working on lessons where you can learn the blocks drag and drop programming and then see the Java coding side by side and tools to kind of show you back and forth. So that's, that's coming along as well. Okay, so kind of, you know, why, why do we use App Inventor? It's kind of the most motivating way to learn coding and think about problem solving. It's very accessible, and the key is you can build real-world software, right? Um, and really, you want to think about it as kind of a new creative medium. So think about it as artists and designers adding a new tool, and that tool is basically going from being able to build you know, images and stuff on the computer that's not interactive to all of a sudden being able to build interactive software. Pretty, pretty big leap. Right now, I think 0.1% of the world can build, build interactive software. Okay, so kind of the main thing why App Inventor I think is, is really terrific is people love these things, right? That's where the motivation comes in. I mean, the fact that you can actually code this, most of my students, they've never even dreamed that that's true. And it's not like, oh, I, I would like to do that, but I thought it was so hard. It, it, they build an app, they're like, oh, people actually develop those apps that run on my phone? I can't, I can't believe it. So it's pretty, pretty motivating. Okay, so your homework. I want you to go to appinventor.org and build an app, okay? Um, tomorrow is uh, Marika and Mar Mar Maurice here? Okay, I don't know. There's a workshop tomorrow on App Inventor at 1.30, so if you want to go check it out, uh, here's a plug for that. And I'm going to be around today and tomorrow. If you'd like to see a little demo or build a quick app, one with your kids in it or yourself, grab me and I'll, I'll give, you a, give you a quick demo. Okay, and anyway, my name's Dave, and, and you can certainly email me, and this talk is up online if you want to get to the, to the slides. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. It was really very interesting. Balloon, kysymusi. Kes, paluks käega märku anda, kes üldarjuduskoolis õpetab programmeerimist? Kas tohib paluda teilt ühte küsimust? Paluks veel märku anda, kes õpetab programmeerimist koolis? Keegi ei tõsta ära pärast. No näete. No coding teachers? Jah, see on, but see on väri shy. Ma küsin eesti keeles siis. Kas vahel juhtub nii, et te kohtate lapse vanemate poolt mingisugust vastuseisu, et arvatakse, et te teete ainult lastega nalja seal tunnis? Väga provokatiivne küsimus. Good. Yeah, so the question is, is do parents think you're joking around and just playing around and not, not learning? And that's kind of the opposite reaction that I get. Our parents... Certainly in the U.S., I think everywhere, they see, oh, wow, there's jobs in coding. Like, there's a lot of people out of work in the U.S., and there's all kinds of coding jobs available. And I think that's pretty much worldwide. So everybody wants this. Our school system is just so slow in making that happen. Um, I think what parents see is, you know, wow, we've got these tablets in schools, or at least lucky schools now. They've got these devices, but it's all consuming the technology on them, right? Oh, we read on them, maybe we play games, we do some interactive lessons. We don't create with them, right? So most parents are like, 
wow, instead of my kid playing a game, he's going to build a game. It's like, oh, that's wonderful, right? They really, really like it. Thank you. No nii, aitäh. Kas sa nel küsimusi? Ja. Elin Karo ja Konguta Kool. Te ei rääkinud midagi kodugeimlaabist. Meil Eestis väga palju tehaks sellega tööd, et kui suur samm sellest kodugeimlaabist nagu edasi see Scratch ja see appin võitel on? Okay, good. Yeah, so I don't know about home home game lab. Is that for Android apps? Okay, yeah, I don't I don't know I I don't, I don't know the tool. So the question was, how different is App Inventor from from home game lab? There's definitely a lot of tools coming out, which are visual kind of drag and drop tools allowing allowing you to build stuff. There's some for iOS as as well. And my my I really am an advocate for all these kind of block based languages. I think they're all terrific. So definitely try try Home Game Lab or try try App Inventor. Thank you. <laughs>